Ready? Two minutes. Hope your plastic's up to date. Now, I've warned you, young lady, ideas only at this stage. Oh, I fancy a big purple shag pile about that thick. One of those great big chandeliers like the ones in St George's Hall. Oh, right. Well, that's my redundancy check taken care of, then. You'll be getting one of those paper shades and a 60-watt bulb the way you're carrying on. Is there any chance of us actually going shopping rather than just discussing it? Yes, I just want to get together the papers for Lindsay's contact hearing. Oh, Eleanor. I'll be ten minutes, I promise. Just in case I'm in a rush when I get back. I might as well finish the washing up, then. Oh, and get rid of whoever that is, otherwise we'll never get to Cheshire Oaks. Oh. Hello. Um, we weren't expecting you. I uh, just called on spec. Uh, thought uh, my daughter might be around. Uh, sorry, but we're just on our way out. We're going to get a few new ideas for Louise's room. Oh, well, it looks like an abortive visit, then. Hello, my darling. How's my little girl? Great. I was going to ring you later. Uh -huh. I've come across some really interesting stuff in the research I've been doing for you. Okay. Thought you would open it up for me. Mummy, why not? I just want to see if there's anything from Brookie Comp in this lot. Oh, come on, Dad. It's hardly a week since you had that interview. Yeah, I know. You know, they usually tell you right away if you've got it. It's the Dear John letters that take a bit longer getting through. Maybe it's a case of no news is good news this time. <sighs> Bill, I'll tell you, 12 and a half thou a year plus a pension to do us very nicely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, <sighs> fancy a top-up, do you, lad? He's a clever boy. Yeah. And reckons you got a right little genius on our hands here. Mm -hmm. Passed all his tests at the clinic, didn't he? With flying colours, your mother says. Mm -hmm. Said the nurse reckoned you could have passed your 18 month test and all the way you were going on. You're a right little Einstein, aren't you? Eh? Yeah, must take after his dad then. Looks like we could have two teachers in the family at this rate, doesn't it, sweetheart, eh? It's a shame. I reckon it would have been great having Robbie and Trisha living next door to us. Not too far to crawl after a Friday night sesh. Yeah, he'll be a real loss to the close. I reckon it's best that he finished it, and if he wasn't ready for the old pipe and slippers routine. Easy come, easy go, eh? I suppose he's got another woman on his arm by now. Oh, forget about it. That's the trouble with you and your mates. You're all out for yourselves and blow the consequences. Just give it a rest, will you? You want to learn, son. Everything has to be paid for one way or another. It's called responsibility, in case you're interested. You need to grow up and learn exactly what that means. We're going to be at this school. A couple of hours, I reckon. We want to see exactly what we're getting for our money, don't we? This test is going to be dead hard, and don't want you having to go at me if I fail. Hey, don't even think that, because you're going to walk it. Not. Well, I thought we could have gone down to the Albert Dock, you know, done the whole touristy bit. Beatles Museum, very cross the Mersey, that kind of thing. Oh, it sounds great. And I'd even lined up this great pub for a bite to eat. But, you know, if you've already got plans. Well, couldn't we do this shopping trip another time? It isn't often that Ellen and I manage to get a morning off together. She's going to be pretty disappointed if you opt out now. Yeah, right. I, I don't want to mess up your arrangements. Yeah, but you two could go without me, couldn't you? Go where? Apparently, Marcus fancies doing a bit of sightseeing. Oh, really? It's no big deal. I mean, look, let's do it some other time, Lou, OK? Can't you just pick up some furniture brochures and I can choose from them? Oh, we've had this trip organised for ages. I thought you were looking forward to it. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Well, can we at least have a coffee before we go? You don't mind, do you? Um, well... Look, just remember, we're on a fixed time scale here. We have to be back by 12.30 at the latest. Strong with just a dash of milk. Oh, that's my girl. Hi, Eric. I reckon you have no problem making friends in any. But I've got loads of mates in Brookie Comp. Ah, oh, yeah, but will you go to uh, Italy on some fancy art trip with Brookie Comp? Eh? Look at this. Florence, Milan. Chance of a lifetime, babe. See all those famous paintings close up? 
But a £750 pound for just a week. <laughs> Getting a decent education doesn't come cheap, you know. We'll have to tighten our belts a bit, but uh, it'll be worth it in the long run. You've got to keep this up. Just get on with your work, eh? Not until we've sorted things between us. We're being paid to do a job, not audition for family fortunes. How are we supposed to work together when you're down my throat every time I open your gob? Keep it shut, then. Might get more sense out of you that way. If you're so smart, do it yourself. Jason! Where are you going? Get back here, Jason! You only went ten minutes ago. But I'm desperate. The exam's gonna start any minute now. But I can't do it from Basin, can I? Look, James, you're just gonna have to put it out of your mind and think positive for the next hour or so. I am, like, positively in need the world. Look, babe, I know this test is gonna be tough, but we both know that you're more than capable of passing it. But I like how quick you come. I'm pretty sure you like what you've seen here and all. I know that it's tough leaving your mates behind, but it's even tougher being a black kid without any decent qualifications behind. I only want what's best for you, darling. And if it means I've got to pay to get it, then that's fine by me. Look, all I want is for you to go in there and do your best. Just give it a try. And if you really hate it, then we'll talk again. So is that a deal or what? Enough, or what? Oh, what? Is your aunt fella still giving you grief over that money, is he? It's like working on the polar regions with that one. It's all about being stubborn. Well, you must be hitting some midlife crisis like my dad. Which is a shame, really, because I need to tap for a new whistle. What for? Well, I'm going to be getting into the insurance business with my old mate, George. You know, we're going to make a killing to finance this film we've got on the go. Yeah, well, good luck to you, mate. It's working with the Iceman for a living. Well, you never know, Chase. There could just be an opening for a bright young lad like you. Do us a favour, kid. Swap that for a few pound coins and a bit of silver, will you? Yeah, sure. Hang on a sec, Raj. Bye. What's up now? We don't want to give ourselves a problem by solving somebody else's, do we? Go on. Always make sure we've got enough change for us. There you go, Mr... Uh... Oh, uh, Jimmy. Corkill. I work next door. So I'll sort myself out for the teaching job in September. Bruno, pleased to meet you, Jimmy. Oh, nice one, Bruno. Nice to meet you. And uh, good luck with the job hunting, yeah? Well, thanks a lot for making me look a right dude. Oh, come on, Rachel, that's a bit strong. I can sort out a bit of change, you know. I'm not completely stupid. I never said you were. Look, like it or not, I'm going to be around for the next couple of months. So why don't we at least try and get along with each other, right? Whatever you say, boss. Doesn't mean I have to like you, though. <sighs> oh, come on. We've heard all this before. Even your publisher's got another book on the list warning about the so-called rape of our planet. So-called? <laughs> Listen, Ollie, <clears throat> you'd have to be blind, deaf and dumb not to see what's happening all around us. And like Marcus says, it's not enough just to recycle stuff and think you're doing your bit. Mm. You know, not that I'm knocking the Blue Peter mentality. I just think we need to move on from there, that's all. We've already got the blueprint. I mean, everything's cyclical, isn't it? Life, the seasons. Ellie, the chestnut tree? Yates. Um, her favourite poet. I'm sure you probably already know that. You reckon your old fella's gonna fall for it? A decent suit doesn't come cheap, you know. Yeah, but he's been giving me enough here. I can about sort myself out and getting a job. I'm just giving him a chance to put his money where his mouth is. Well, don't count your chickens if your old fella's anything like mine. What are you doing here, man? I'm taking the bottle of you, Mrs S. Not yet, lad. But it won't be long, the race lot of carrying on. All right, I'll leave you to it, then, eh? Do you want a coffee? I'm not here to socialise. I want to see what we can do to sort things out between you and your dad. So how's your dad feeling about going to court tomorrow? Well, he's wetting himself, actually. He reckons it'll just be his luck if the magistrate decides to make an example of him. They wouldn't send him to prison, though, would they? We'll have to wait and see. It's a real possibility, yeah. But he's still your dad, love, warts and all. Yeah, and he's the one that started all of this. I don't think my Greg would say it quite like that. 
I know I should have told him about the baby and everything, but I knew he'd be like this. I'm nearly 21, Gran, and he still treat me like some scabby five-year-old. It's hard for him to let go, love. You know, he's, he's really hurt about the baby and the money, but most of all, he's upset because you didn't feel you could talk to him about what was going on with you and Katrina. And he wonders why. I've had it up to you with me, Dad. He's the one that's acting like some great big stupid kid. So, how are we going to sort things out between the two of you? I reckon the best thing all round would be for me to find myself another job. Because as far as I'm concerned, the less we have to save each other, the better. three of us were going to spend a pleasant morning shopping together. Yeah. So did I, Ollie. Instead of which, we're subjected to the shortened version of the Seddon theory of man's inhumanity to all things, eco-worthy in our own home. You surely don't expect me just to walk out and leave them to it? I mean, you can see how wrapped up in him she is. Oh, she's almost 19 now, more than capable of looking after herself. Yeah, but she's my daughter. Yes, and I'm your partner. Yes, and I'm sick of playing piggy in the middle between the three of you. Yeah, you and me both. You don't take sugar, do you? Oh, no, especially not that stuff. Ah. All the goodness has been refined out of it. For God's sake, man, don't you ever stop! I'd have thought the privations of prison life would have numbed your sensibilities by now. Now, on the contrary, Ollie, 18 years deprivation seems to heighten loss. At least that's my experience. I'll get the milk. Don't bother. I think Marcus has just had stayed his welcome. Yeah. You didn't get round to showing me that research material, Lou. Oh, sh shall I get it now? No. Things to do, hon. Another time, eh? OK, well, it's my birthday Friday. Will you come round then? Well, just you try and stop me. See you Friday, then. Ellen has been off playing with my family's all day, and my phone hasn't stopped me. Well, it's a phone-free zone in here. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. Hiya. Oh, hi, Sam. I just want no. Jackie's address in Birmingham. <coughs> you all right, Casey? Sure. It um, just went <coughs> down the wrong way. Don't suppose you've got it on you. What? What are you on? Jackie's address in Birmingham. I thought I'd go down on my day off. I need to get a check up for the holiday. Well, um, I can do one for both of us. Well, what's up? Do you know where she is or something? Yeah, of course I do. If uh, if you want to go and see a mate in Birmingham, I can take you down. Um, no, you're all right. Thanks. I'll just get it sent in the post. What time are you meeting that Alan anymore? One o'clock. She's gonna run me to the hearing. It doesn't go on, I'll have to leave. Well, listen, I'll look after this place for a bit if you want to get off home. <sighs> I will in a bit. I mean, I'd rather be busy than worrying about what nasty trick Gaddy's been up to since the last sort. Yeah, well, at least we haven't had his ugly mug turning up on the doorstep every five minutes, have we? Since Peter sold to Mike, you mean? He had it coming, didn't he? Oh. And Peter suddenly flavoured the month, is he? Because he proved he's a proper fella by beating Gaddy to a pulp. Oh. Don't be talking like that. Did it because you love your legs and little Cardi. Can't be blaming the lad for looking out for the pair of yous. I know. I'm just worried sick that Gaddy's going to use it to get what he wants. I don't want him messing up my life more than he already has. Oh, aye, aye, Lens. Better make sure the gas is turned off at the main. Just give it a rest day, Cork. Or what? You let me with your nose. Just leave it, Dad. Oh, like he should have done with that cooker. I'll see you in court, Dicko. And I hope they throw the flaming book at you. All I'm saying is, I don't know why you didn't ask him to leave two hours ago. Because Louise clearly wanted him to stay. Oh, well, and that's enough reason to let him ruin our plans. Oh, it's no big deal. You can go another time. Oh, yes, as long as we check it with Marcus first. I'll talk to Louise tonight. I think we'd better go back to issuing visiting orders for Marcus. Ollie? Don't I get a kiss? Bye. 
Come on, Jens. It couldn't have been that bad. You answered all the questions, didn't you? Yeah. Well, you got no worries, then? Dad, I can't go there. Why not, Gemma? All year, we'll go dead mad if you send me to some dead expensive school. Hey, it's not up to your brother how I spend my money. Yeah, but he reckons we won't be able to go on holiday again or do good stuff like bowling anymore. That's why he wanted me to fail the test, so we'll have lots of money and he won't have to work in the chippy. Oh, did he know? He's going to go dead mad if I pass and you're going to go dead mad if I don't. And I just want to have a good laugh with me mates. And now I'm in all sorts of trouble when my test results come back. Gemma! Right, lad, you get yourself off home. Make his dad a sarny, eh? What are you playing at, mother? Well, go on, then, and stick the kettle on while you're about it. What the hell's going on? You and me are going to have a nice little picnic. You're joking, aren't you? I'm working. Yeah, me too, son. I've taken up building bridges in my spare time. Now get back there and make yourself comfy, cos for once in your life you are going to sit and listen to what your mother has to say. What are we doing with that? Trying to find out where the council office is. How come? I need to know who owns that church hall across the way. St Christopher's? Mm -hmm. What for? Because Barry asked me to find out. Is it go where they wear those little flowery tops and grass skirts? <laughs> oh, I nearly forgot Jackie's little tie she picked up the old for Susanna. That's all this about. Um, Max wanting to get a new dress for Susanna. Yes, there's a surprise, uh, but they only had the size in the shop in um, Birmingham. Oh, is it for a special occasion? Yes. Yeah, I thought I'd get her something extra special, you know, for a holiday. I don't know, Michael. You take the biscuit, you do. Here I am at me wit's end worrying about tomorrow and you're after me for the price of a suit. Well, I thought you'd be made up. I've got myself a job. Yeah, of course I am, son. These things are looking up for one of us, eh? So is it, uh, all right if I go and get myself kitted out to Savvy in town? No, you might as well. The less I've got, the less the courts can screw me for. Um, you do know that Jimmy Cogle's planning on putting a claim in for Campo after what happened to Kylie in the explosion? Trust that slime bag to jump on the bandwagon. He's talking big bucks, you know, Dad. Yeah, well, he can talk all he likes cos he can't have what I ain't got. Well, he knows that you've got money stashed away in a bank account in our Jackie's name. Well, what? Which Dibby let that out? <sighs> Michael. Look, Dad, it just slipped out. I wasn't thinking. You know, that just about sums you up. They're smirking at me across that courtroom. And that really would have been playing right into his hands. I oh, know. I can't believe that he can just walk back into our lives and cause all this upset. He hasn't even seen Kylie for the past two years. And now he's making out that I'm the one who's not fit to be a parent. Try not to let it get to you, Lindsay. And as far as the court's concerned, he's Kylie's father. And as such, he has certain rights. Rights? Well, what about mine and Kylie's rights? If he really cared for her, he'd leave us alone to get on with our lives. All I'm saying is, they made a mistake and they dealt with it as best they could. My God, son, it's not the end of the world, you know. Well, if it was so unimportant, how come no one bothered letting me in on the secret? I wouldn't dream of breaking my grandson's confidence, and you shouldn't expect me to either. If you want to know the whys and wherefores, why don't you try talking to the lad, instead of crashing round like some sulky teenager yourself? Because that Katrina's done a job on him, hasn't she? I blame her for all this. She couldn't wait to get her claws into him. I don't believe I'm hearing this. She's not some flaming Jezebel, you soft devil. She's just some young girl enjoying her first mature relationship with a lad who happens to be your son. Mature? Making our Jason sneak it off to some abortion clinic behind our backs with money he stole off his old fella? Oh, I'm other dead mature, that. Would you just stop and listen to yourself for a minute? How the hell do you know what was going through that poor girl's head? I know she made my son help her get rid of my grandkid because she didn't want to be saddled with a baby. My God, Gregory. You've got an awful lot of growing up to do yet. Oh, here we go. Jesse Shadwick, world expert. That's right. Because I've been on this earth a damn sight longer than you, and nothing you can say or do is going to convince me that any young girl would put herself through all that anguish just for the sake of convenience. It wasn't just some troublesome tooth she got rid of, you know. It was a baby. Believe me, that girl has suffered, and she's going to go on suffering for the rest of her life. And if you can't see that, then God help the lot of us. 
I always knew you were pig-headed. But at least pigs are blessed with a bit of intelligence. I just can't believe that some welfare officer's gonna come into our home and check that I'm fit enough to bring up my own daughter. I know how it must seem, but the courts really do have Kylie's best interest at heart. I mean, they're not going to be making any drastic decisions, no matter what poison that Gary's been feeding them. So when do you reckon this person's going to come round? Well, it'll probably take a few weeks to arrange, so until then, we stick to the truth and we don't allow Gary to provoke us into saying or doing anything that could damage our case. Is that understood? I'm on your side, you know. You're just going to have to trust me on this. Did he get the wrong number, that Reverend Chalmers? No, it was me who wanted. Bats in Christopher's Hall across the way. What about it? Do you want a hand with those? No, I can manage. Look, Rachel, why don't we put the clock back a couple of days and pretend we've never met, eh? I don't know what you're talking about. How do you fancy coming out for a meal with me tomorrow night? me for a date. Mm. I'm sorry, my diary's full up for the rest of the year. If the courts find out that I've got over ten grand in my daughter's bank account, they'll have a field day with me in the morning. You and your big god, Michael, when are you going to learn to keep it shut? They don't know it's yours, it's only hearsay. Oh, yeah, fear me old flaming son. Look, Dad, all you've got to do is plead poverty. Go for the sympathy vote. And while you're at it, just lay it on thick about your dodgy ticket. Oh, I see. Just, like, strap a heart monitor to me chest for effect. No, but I've got a mate down the Aussie who can sort a wheelchair off for the day. I mean, by the time we finish, you'll have them in tears. Michael, this is a court of law, son, not the amateur dramatics. Well, then, prepare to wave goodbye to everything that you've got. Well, I'll just have to take that chance, won't I? Because I do have some pride left, you know, Michael. I've told the truth so far, and I'm not going to stop now. I'm going to have my day in court, and then it's up to the magistrate. If he wants to throw the book at me, so be it. But I'm not going to let myself or my family down by lying under oath. Next on 4, a new series of Equinox reveals shocking details of a Russian nuclear threat. Just before Deals on Wheels, will it be a fair deal for Ron Dixon in Brookside? when you got it to school? All right, yeah. Just a bit of a money now, you know. Nothing to worry about. Oh, maybe I should have kept it off. Mind you, I've got to open up at work. Right, I'll get off and see you later. Any post? On the table. Oh, Lindsay, why didn't you say? Anything for me? Well, yeah. I'm sorry, Dad. Yes, got it. <laughs> The job applications. The replies have come together. Dad. 
Start. Greg? The district office just filmed. You'd like me to go in and talk about that union job? In like an interview. All oh, right. Is that all you've got to say? That's great. Well done. Good luck. What's wrong with you? You've been on another planet ever since you saw your mum. What happened? I don't know. It was weird. She's never been like that with me before. Like what? I don't know how to explain it. I'll try. Are you sure these are for your dad? Martin James Corkhill, 26 Harmon Road. Perhaps they got a computer out or something, you know. And then stuck him in that big envelope. Yeah, but... One knockback, I can understand. But two. And on the same day. You just have to try again. I've been trying. I've tried for the last 12 months. Day and night. I've worked myself into the ground trying to get a teaching job, and now this. Look at them. Just a few sentences. We don't want to know. Thank you and good night. Why, eh? I mean, two long interviews, talking about everything under the sun, and all they can do is say, we do not require your services. I mean, where to go wrong? Hey? What's the problem? All the efforts I put in, and they can't even be bothered to tell me why I failed. You haven't failed. I have. Here's the proof. Dad, there'll be other jobs you can try again. You've got to try again. I know who's going to have me. Eh? Well, that's it. The end of my dream. You know, love, all I wanted was to walk tall. I wanted to hold my head up high and show people that I dragged myself up and away from what I used to be. Just wanted to provide properly for your mother and Wills. I was counting on that job, love. I wanted to put this family back on its feet. She was really having a go at me about Jason and Katrina. She said they didn't get rid of the baby as a matter of convenience. Come. Well, she was really upset. She was shaking like a leaf. And then she just stopped talking like she couldn't bear to go on and left me. I've been thinking about it and... I'm wondering if she hasn't got rid of a baby at some time. Your mum? I know it sounds crazy. I mean, she goes to church, does voluntary work and all that. Doesn't seem like her, but... What, love? It's just something that happened one Boxing Day when I was a kid. We had all the family round. I might have got this all wrong, but... Well, my Auntie Elsie had been on the port in Lemons, and she made some remark about my mum going off to stay with some auntie of theirs in Derbyshire for a few months. I remember her saying she came back a few stone lighter. Caused a massive row that Christmas. Everyone's shouting and swearing. I got shoved off to bed with a five-pound note. I never heard any more about her. I keep going over it in my mind. Maybe that's why she got so upset. Look, I don't want anyone else knowing about this. I might have got it all wrong. I wish I did. Might make things a bit clearer. You're gonna have to ask her. You what? You don't let your mother stuff like that. Well, if you don't ask, you'll never know. At least if you know the truth. I might stop dwelling on it, eh? Yeah. I'll see you later. Right. I'm going to come down and sit in on Ron Dixon's court case, or what? Oh, I'll give it a mess if you don't mind. Hey, guess what? Our gym has been accepted to the private school, you know. Oh, yeah. Hey, she walked it, mate. I mean, I must admit, I'm a bit surprised, because she was dead nervous at the entrance exam. But her results were good. In fact, the head teacher said exceptional. So what are you going to do, then? You going to send her, or what? She's going to have the best education I can afford, mate. Well, why don't you let her make the choice? Well, just talk to her before you commit yourself. Let Gemma decide. Anyway, better get down to that court. Can't wait to see what Ron Dixon's gonna say for himself. Yeah, see you later. See you later. 
should have had some scrang, you know. I don't know, I'm going to keep you waiting. I just want to get in a taxi and get it over with, OK? Mick said last night he was in court this morning. I think I'll go and take a gander at that. I thought you were supposed to be doing the tea time shift. I'm going to see him sent down for this. Why should we be like this, eh? Struggling to survive, no future, while that tight-fisted fiddler's rolling in money. It's not fair, Lindsay. He's sitting pretty on cash. He's fiddled for donkey's years. But he should be paying us compensation for what he did with that cooker, what he's put this family through. Look at that. He takes a taxi and I'm on the next bus. Dad, I want to go and see Alan, so make sure you're back in time. Well, I was just thinking. I think I might give it a miss. I can go another time. Oh, is there something wrong? Are you feeling ill? No, but... You may not get another chance. You've only got eight weeks to go. I know, but it's only an excuse for a bunch of pregnant mums to get out the house for an hour <laughs> or so. Don't be so silly. Well, the thing is, I need to take a call from me dad. And Katie phoned me this morning. She's coming over later. Well, you can still do all that and not miss your chance to see the maternity unit. It's an ideal opportunity and it won't feel so strange when you actually do go and have the baby. <sighs> well, I had enough for hospitals last year when I had my eyes done. A few days for the birth will do me. Honestly, Jackie, believe me, you'll feel a whole lot better when you've actually seen what goes on there. Heavens, I wish I'd had the opportunity with my first. There was hardly a decent antenatal clinic where we were living at the time. Oh, come on, enjoy yourself. <sighs> All this fuss over nothing. <laughs> oh. Hello? Hiya, love, it's me. How long do you think you'll be? The traffic's unbelievable, Dad. Yeah, the tailback is miles long. I just can't say. Yeah, but keep going, I want you, Jack. Cos I'd like you to be here. Yeah, thanks, love. Bye. She's stuck in some massive traffic jam on the M6. It's always that busy round Birmingham. That's the busiest motorway intersection in Europe, you know. No, I didn't know that, son. All I know is I wanted her to be here. Just in case, you know. Dad, you won't. I just wish I was as sure as you are. Well, that's all I need. <laughs> Wouldn't be a show without punch, would it? Just ignore them, Dad. They're like vultures. Well, there's nothing they can do. It's all down to the court. <laughs> flaming Nora. I'm surprised someone hasn't got a shadow. Up. Next thing you know, we'll have Julia Brogan and a flaming mint imperials. Ronald Dixon. Ronald Dixon? Oh, you should have stuck a cushion down your tights. <laughs> <laughs> Number two on your list, Your Worship, Ronald Dixon. You are Ronald Dixon? <clears throat> yes. And you live at Flat 4, Brookside Parade, Manor Park? Yes. Ronald Dixon. You are charged under the Gas Safety Installation and Use Regulations 1994 as amended by Regulations 3.1 and 3.3. God, they're so tiny. They're beautiful. Mm. That one's got a tube up its nose. Oh, they're premature. That's the way they feed them. The tube goes straight down to the little toms. Oh. Oh, God, God! Oh, God! I hate you! I hate you! Don't touch me ever again! Oh. Oh, no! Hey, friends. Oh, no, no. Don't fuss about nothing. Who oh, fancy making a show of yourself like that? 
and that you were not competent as you were not registered as such under the Council of Registered Gas Installers. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Through to our Jacqueline, what did she say? Traffic's a nightmare. She's had to turn back. At least she tried. It's a birthday this week. I wonder if she'll come home for that. Well, she is busy. Mind you, I might be somewhere else myself if... Oh, get real, will you, Dad? Oh, come on, Michael. You heard that prosecutor. He was laying her on with a trowel. They've been out damn near 40 minutes now. Dad, will you just pack it in? Oh, come on, let's go and get a coffee or something. Eh? No, no, you go if you want, I'm all right here. Listen, um, I was going to go and get me and Jimmy a cup of tea or something. Do you fancy anything? No, thanks. A sandwich or something? If I want anything, I can get it myself. Hey, you know that stylist piece was after? He's got one. Yeah? Yeah, it's just started. <laughs> She's a good laugh. You should have seen her in the bar last night doing a skit of Peter. It was dead funny. <laughs> How old is she? About 40, I suppose. Mm. Too old to entice him away from Lindsay Cork, eh? Mm, just a bit. Hey, I never told you about Rachel, did I? Bruno asked her out and she knocked him back. Never. She must be mad. He's gorgeous. Hey, I bet you that was the first for beautiful Bruno. Mm, maybe last me next time. How about Louise? She's still seeing her dad, jailbird Jesus. Oh, he's writing a book or something like that. Oh, that's the stuff I miss being stuck in this place day in, day out. I love this flat. I love to spend a bit of time here living in luxury. It's boring. I want to be thin again and I want to be back at work. Hey, I was thinking about starting some kind of leisure centre when I've had the baby. You know, all the key fit and gym kinds of stuff, but a nightclub as well. What do you reckon? Yeah, why not? That's me dad. Oh, Susanna, just checking. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hey, Rach. Well, when did they come in? All right, Rach, don't panic. Just tell me exactly what happened. Please stand. <laughs> Remain standing, Mr Dixon. Ronald Dixon, you pleaded guilty to a very serious offence. By installing a gas appliance without the proper authority and qualification, you have selfishly and recklessly put the lives of others at risk. It was only by sheer good fortune that nobody on that shopping parade was killed. Under the penalties at my disposal, I have the power to send you to the Crown Court with a view to sending you to prison. Indeed, I have considered that. I believe at a time when new regulations are about to come into force, it would seem appropriate that I should make an example of you to others. I have also considered carefully that you have admitted your folly in committing these offences and taking into consideration your age, your previous good character and your current medical condition, we have decided upon a substantial financial penalty instead. You will be fined £3,000 and costs of £450 to be paid by yourself. And taking into account your statement of finances and your circumstances, we order that this be paid at the rate of £18 per week. You what? You are joking, aren't you? My carny nearly got killed and you're finding him 18 quid a week! Is that all my family's way? It's a scandal, that. You should have sent him down for what he did. Come on, Dad, let's go. Hey. You've got away with 
this because you haven't. I'm not settling for 18 quid a week. You pleaded guilty in here, and I'm going to bleed you dry over this. Shut it, my Jim. Come on. No, wait! Hey, you uh, were. Said. It was a miracle no one was killed. Yeah, well, my Kylie and our family have been through hell because of what you did. 18 lousy quid a week. It's a bloody disgrace that when you've got thousands and thousands stashed away. I haven't got any money. No, no, on paper you haven't. That's just it's all salted away in your Jackie's name. Yeah, well, I want my share. You're not getting a penny out of me. I'll leave it to me. You put my granddaughter in hospital for a month. How dare you say that? Hey, if you want someone to blame, try knocking on his door. He's as much to blame as me. Don't give me that. You pressurised him into doing a job for you, and he did it. Yeah, because you were too flaming tight to get a proper fit in it. Oh, come on. It was bank holiday, Good Friday. I was stuck. It was an accident. Listen to the two of you trying to blame each other. Hot bed saved your life. You get fined 18 quid a week. You're not crippled for life, are you? And that's for you. Yeah, you should have been up there with him. You want jail and fat so. And don't worry. One day, I'm going to get you. Come on, Dad, let's get a taxi. Come on, Dad, let's get a bit. Come on. She's right about you, Dixon. You're a free man, and her son's in a wheelchair. Well, you'll pay for this. To write your will. Oh, he's a coughed. I pleaded guilty, didn't I? At least she's still got a son. I used to have a son, but now he's dead, remember? You make me sick, you. You're just a parasite. All you want to do is cash in on what happened to your little Kylie. You'd use your own granddaughter to have the shirts off me back, wouldn't you? Right. Well, if that's what you want, dear. Take the bloody thing and I've done with right, it. Let's get in the cab. Come on. I'll have you, Dixon. I'll have the skin off your back. Never mind this. Did you get that? All right, Rach, don't worry about it. Don't tell anyone and I'll sort it out. Yeah, I know you worry, but I'll get it sorted, so just leave it to me. All right, thanks for ringing. Bye. <sighs> That's all I need. What? Rachel's had the VAT inspectors in the bar. This is all Mike getting caught fiddling the dough. Listen, I knew I'd have all sorts crawling over me books. What are you gonna do? <sighs> I've got no choice. I'll have to go back over to Liverpool. Jackie, you can't do that. It's too risky. What if anyone sees you? Look at the size. What about your dad? I need to be there. Well, can't Bruno deal with it? No, it's down to me. I'll go first thing in the morning, dead early when no one will see me. You're going to have to be so careful, Jack. I'll be all right if I don't end up like that woman in the maternity unit this morning. <sighs> Can you imagine what Corkle's telling the papers? Dad, will you just forget it? It's not going to do you any good getting stressed out. Are you ready to enjoy the stuff? I can't help it, son. Look, Dad, it's what the court's decided. It's got nothing to do with Jimmy. This morning, you were bricking about getting jailed. But now you've got a fine, you can afford to pay it, no probs. So will you just relax, eh? Yeah, but what if he does sue me? He won't. You need money to sue people, and he's got none. That's why he's hounding you. That money's in our Jackie's name. It Maybe I should hand over something to Ben and the Corkills. Are you soft or what? If you give them a single penny, it's like admitting it was all down to you. Just forget it, Dad. You look after yourself. It's all over. All right, love. How's it going? Give us a break. I'll get the 20 questions to his team when Ollie and Ellie come <laughs> home. Be happy now. Talk to your mum? Yeah, no, I phoned, but she wasn't in. Well, if it's bothering you that much, why don't you go round while I do the tea? I want to get this footing finished before I knock off. I'll go after tea. I've got some work stuff I've got to finish. Well, I've got to see someone about an extension. There's no rush. I'll talk to you when the time's right, when I'm not so pushed with work. How did the interview go? Are we interested, are we now? Of course I am. It's ages since I've had an interview like that. It's like the doctors. Let me know in a couple of weeks. So, what do you reckon? Well, it sounds like a good job, but it mean longer hours. I know. Will you be able to manage? You mean, will you be able to manage? It'll mean a lot of evening work. No tea on the table sometimes. It's not just that. You'll have to do your share at the supermarket. I know that. And you might even have to take a course on how to use a washing machine. I was thinking about my paperwork, estimates, bookkeeping and all that. I can't manage all that as well as the job. I haven't even got the job yet. We've got two weeks to talk it over. OK. Right, I'll go in and do the tea, and I think you should go and see you more. 
I told you, I'll leave it for now. Right, fine. Do it in your own time. But I wouldn't leave it too long, Valerie. Just leave it to me. Just leave it to me. Eighteen quid a week. Have you ever heard the likes of that, Mick? Eighteen quid. That's like putting Saddam Hussein on community service. What do you mean? Well, don't you think it stinks, mate? Well, I can see your points of view, but that's, of course, decisions, mate. Courts, don't give me that. They've always been out of touch with what normal people think. And where did they get these magistrates from, anyway? If it was their kids involved, it'd be a different story, wouldn't it? Too right, it would. All right, Linz. Look, uh, I'll see you guys later, eh? Turn on. Well, Mick Johnson obviously doesn't care, does he? No, well, he's all right, isn't he? Here's us on four quid an hour, and he's in his big house and his flash car. Decent future, all the rest of it. So what, you're going to ask me why I went to see Eleanor? Oh, sorry, love. How'd you get on? I just wanted to talk to you about what happens now after this direction, Aidan. And what'd she say, love? Well, she said this court welfare officer wants to see me at home on Friday with Harry. Friday? I thought she said it would take a couple of weeks. She did, but apparently someone's free to do it this week. Well, I hope you told her where to go. How could I? She says I've got to tell him everything. I mean, how's this report going to look, eh? I mean, if Gary can twist the truth, what'll this court fella do? Don't talk to me about courts. As far as I'm concerned, it's only them that lie through their teeth, the likes of that skeg, Ron Dixon, who get the justice. Them and people with money. Next on four, from a hip little mini to a Rolls-Royce silver shadow, get the truth on the second-hand car market in a new series of Deals on Wheels. Your ties had to travel away from Chester. I don't know how you managed it. Oh, in case of having to. Okay. You know. Oh, Keith, you can't get the keys to turn. He's been looking up. You know, yeah, give us a little bit. I know, but if we don't hurry up, someone might see me. Yeah. Oh, thank God for that. I didn't wake you, did I? No. I was awake anyway. I take it you've got the same problem? Oh, I haven't had a good night's sleep all week. Mine doesn't want to switch off. I just want to get this assessment thing over with. Well, today's the day, Kat. Don't I know it. OK. See you later. Send my best wishes to Tom and Joan. OK, bye. What time did Louise say she was coming back? Oh, about six o'clock. What time did you book the restaurant for? Seven. Right. Well, I suppose I'd better be getting off to work. Do you think you'll hear anything more about the redundancy threat? I doubt it. They don't seem very forthcoming with information. Well, in the meantime, you just expected to sit and suffer? Well, I've no intention of suffering at all. In fact, I'm starting to come round to the idea. Really? Well, let's face it, we hardly see each other. As things stand, you're working all week and I'm having to go into the bookshop at weekends. So? What do you intend to do? Become a gentleman of leisure? Something like that, yes. No, seriously, I've worked there for long enough, so I should get a decent payoff, which means that I won't be forced into making any snap decisions. Oh, well, I'm glad you're looking at it in such a positive light. Mm, I'm starting to think that maybe taking redundancy isn't such a bad idea after all. Give me a chance to reorganize my life. And, most important of all, I'll be able to see a lot more of you. Who's left this vacuum cleaner at the bottom? 
bottom of the stairs. Nearly broke me flaming toe there. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. You don't think I've overdone it, do you? Oh, no, love. He'll think he's come to toys at us, won't he? I think I'd just leave out the educational stuff if I were you, love. Yeah, you're right. Come on, Kylie. Help me take some of these upstairs. Oh, I want to play with them. We're not taking everything. Just some toys. Come on. Jimmy, what do you think you're doing there for the welfare officer? All right, I'm starving here. He's not going to eat the old packets, is he? I don't care. There'll be none left to put on the place. Look, make yourself some toast if you're hungry. And I'm warning you, don't you believe in any crumbs? He won't be here for ages yet. I don't care. Look, I want everything to be right, don't I? Oh, Lindsay's in a right state. Do you know, I could swing for that Gary putting us through all this. I don't know. Mediators, welfare officers. It'll be the social services next, trying to say our oh, Lindsay's unfit to be a mother or something. What are you talking about? All this is about Gary wanting access. It's not about whether our Lindsay's a good mother. <sighs> Love, I've seen it before with these custody battles. It can all turn very nasty. And let's face it, we don't know what Gary's been saying to people, do we? It's exciting, this. Secret codes and everything. Oh, yeah, well, it's a type of excitement I could do without. You didn't have to get up, you know. Why didn't you use the buzzer? What buzzer? Look, Baron Bruno had it put in. Yeah, watch this. Katie, you go outside for a minute. <clears throat> well, when did all this happen? Not long after Bruno arrived. He couldn't believe he didn't have a system already set up. Yeah, Jack, this buzzer opens the door. I suppose this is another one of Barry's big ideas. I thought he'd be pleased with it. Well, I am, but well, I'd just like to be kept informed, that's all. Well, Bruno said it's ideal from a safety point of view, especially for pregnant women. <laughs> um, what have you got there? Didn't think we'd forget your birthday, did ya? Oh, thanks. Happy birthday. I've just put some money in a car because I thought you'd probably want to splash out on something nice after you've had the baby. Ditto. So, what's the plan then? Well, I don't want anyone coming in this office. Does that include Bruno? No, I want to have a word with him later on, but he's the only one. And remember, if my dad comes in, I'm not even supposed to be here. Oh, Jimmy, sit down, will you? I'm getting knees in my keck sitting here like this. I thought he was supposed to be here by now. Well, maybe he's got lost. <sighs> Love, it's only quarter past. I thought it was later than that, Mummy. You sure I look all right? Yes, look, I told you, you look fine. Oh, Kylie, what are you doing that for? You're making a mess. I want a bit. Love, you can't expect her to see them all in front of her and not want one. Here, all of I'm sorry, Love, I wasn't shouting at you. I just don't want you messing the room up. Come on, kid. We don't want this fella thinking we're an untidy bunch, do we? Hey, come and read it with me. Ugh. And a little bad hand said, not I think this is it. It's a woman. Right. Better go and let it in then. And the little bad hand said. Right then. Do you need anything else? Um, no thanks. Once Rachel's checked if the coast is clear, I'll see Bruno, and then I need to be getting on with all of this. Okay then, I'll leave you to it. Oh, that'll be Bruno. Hiya. Hiya. Right, I'll come back at dinner time. I'll bring you something to eat. Thanks, Katie. See ya. So, what do you think of the new security system? Eh? Well, it'll certainly come in handy. Oh, I've got lots of handy little ideas. How are you getting on with the books? Um, they seem to be all right. Are they the, uh, the legal books, or...? Um, I beg your pardon. I only keep one set of books, if you don't mind. We could do you a really good deal on some French booze. I'm surprised Barry hasn't already spoke to you about it. That's because Barry wants me to run this place legit, and so do I. All right. But if you ever change your mind, I'm your man. Anyway, what I really wanted to talk to you about was the church hall. Did you manage to find out any more about it? Well, I reckon they're doing an insurance job. They'll keep the money for the repairs, but sell the hall. Oh. And with a bit of luck, we might be onto a prime site to build a ledge centre. And the little bad hand said... I will bake, I will bake, and she did. Good. <laughs> Would you like tea or coffee, Paul? Oh, I'd love a coffee, thanks. So, uh, what happens now, like? Well, as you're already probably aware, I'm here today to spend some time with Kylie in order for me to make an accurate assessment of her. Is, um, is there anything we can do? Well, it, it would be very helpful if the grown-ups could make themselves as scarce as possible. Well, I thought you might want a word with me as well. Well, no, 
of course, I'll start off by talking with you and Carly together. But we will still need some privacy. So, um, do you want us to leave the house, then? Oh, no, 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 that won't be necessary. I mean, we can all have a coffee together first. He'll give me a chance to get to know this young lady. <laughs> yeah, i sandwich and a drink. Oh, thanks. I was just starting to feel a bit peckish. Still no sign of his ass? No, he hasn't even been near. Thank God for that. Do you getting on? Hey, I've done quite a bit. Fancy doing VAT returns on your beard, eh, start, eh? <laughs> well, we'll make up for it next time. We'll do something really special. It's a deal. Hey, um, what do you make of Bruno? Well, I think he's quite attractive, but she doesn't think so. He fancies her and she doesn't want to know. You what? I thought so. I was supposed to be the one with the bad eyes. Yeah, well, I'm not interested in going out with anyone at the moment. Oh, come on, Rachel. You've got to move on. You can't be hung up on Christian forever. I'm not hung up. I just can't bother getting involved with anyone. Shh. Rachel? Rachel, are you in there? Give it a minute and then you better go before someone else comes looking for you. Are all these yours? Yeah. Which one's your favourite? This one. Yeah, I think I like that one as well. I bet you got loads more up in your bedroom, haven't you? Should we go and have a look? No. Kylie, don't be like that. Go up and show Paula. I want to stay with you, Mummy. It's all right. We don't want to force her. It must be very confusing. You must spend half your time telling her not to talk to strangers, and yet we expect her to just want to talk to me straight away. I'll tell you what. Why don't you stay with Paula and show her all your lovely toys, and I'll just be out in the garden with your Nana and Grandad, OK? She'll be fine. <laughs> Cheers, I'll see you again, though. <laughs> Can we get a tissue, will you? you? Can't be sneezing over everything. No. Put a smile on your face. It's been tripping you up ever since you got here. What's the matter with you? You know what's the matter with me? I don't want to leave Bicky Con. Oh, not that again, baby. Well, Brent, then you never seem to want to talk about it. All right. Give me one good reason why you shouldn't leave. Because I miss my friend. Yeah, you can make new ones. Bro, the girls are just their posh girl, going to be. What, bright, clever, fortunate, just like you. I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say right. I don't want to be the odd one out. What's that going to do with anything? I don't want to be different. I just want to fit in. I don't send you to school to fit in. I want you to get the best education available. I don't care if the school's only got a few black kids in it. That's because you're the one who doesn't have to go. Gemma, that's all the more reason why you should go. Why should all the white kids get the best opportunities, eh? Black people have been held back for far too long. What's that got to do with me? Trust me. One day you'll thank me for this. All right, Cass. Uh, hey, there's a lot against child labour, you know. Shouldn't she be at school? Child labour? You're joking, aren't you? She hasn't lifted a finger since she'd been here. Don't feel well. Got a cold. <laughs> I just popped in for some chips, but I can take Gemma to Bar Brook if you something to eat, if you like. Please. I thought you were supposed to be sick. <laughs> Go on, then. First time she smiles at all day. <laughs> she can come and sit at the petrol station with me until I knock off. Yeah, see if you can talk some sense into her for me. See you later. Oh, hi, Peter. Hey, yeah. Sorry, I couldn't get here sooner. Oh, don't worry, kid. You haven't missed anything. How long's she gonna be in there? I don't know until she's finished. And what's taking so long, like? Keep your voice down, Jim. Oh, don't be worrying, will ya? She's not gonna wait me out here, is she? Do you know something? I feel stupid sat in the garden in my best togs. Well, we just have to be patient. Why don't you go out, say? There's nothing you can do. Oh, where to, like? Hey, and with what? I've got no job, I've got no money, remember? Hey, it's a pity you can't style here. Eh? There was a job going at our place, but I've got someone starting next week. Well, I'll tell you something, Peter. I'm that skint. If I'd known about that, I would have put on for myself. Oh, for God's sake, Jim. Well, it's true, Jackie. I'm getting desperate, you know that? Compensation, that's what we should have got. We should be rolling in it. 18 lousy quid a week. That's all Ron Dixon's got to pay. I can't believe it. After everything our Kylie went through. Yeah, but if I'd have been looking after her, she would never run off and got hurt in that explosion. Hey, don't be soft. There was nothing you could do. Hey, there. Hey, yeah. Come here. It's been in my room. Oh, I take it you must be Barry. Kylie's been telling me all about that teddy you bought her. <laughs> no, this is Peter, my mummy's older boyfriend. He bought my wellies. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have assumed. Um, this is Peter, my boyfriend. Barry's. He's just a friend. On the 
the drink? No, I've had enough, thanks. So what's been going on with you and your dad? It's this private school thing. I still don't want to go. And uh, what have your friends had to say about it? They're buzzing off me. Skirt and uniform. Stupid that I have to be. And that's why you don't want to go? No. Are you sure? I just don't want to be different. Let me try and explain something to you. Having friends is a good thing. But sometimes they can, how can I put this, sort of hold you back. How do you mean? Well, take this new school, for instance. This is really a good opportunity for you. Any good friend would say, yes, Gemma, nice one, go for it. We're so proud of you. They wouldn't say that. They think it's a rubbish school. Hayley says she wouldn't be found dead in that school. Maybe it's she's saying that because she knows she's never going to get the chance to go. Hayley's probably going to do something that you can't. Yeah. She's captain of the netball team and I didn't even get a place. And did you say, rubbish, don't play? No. But I must admit, I was a bit jealous. There you go. Have you ever thought maybe your friend's just a little bit jealous of you? Never even crossed my mind. So is there anything good about the school your dad's got his heart set on? Yeah, the IT department's great. Everything's clean and new. And Cassie, when do you go on school trips? Do you go to foreign countries? Oh, so you're going to miss out on Colin Mendy then? <laughs> Sounds pretty good to me. Hey, do you think your dad'll pay for me to go to this rubbish school? <laughs> Jackie's dad's just walked in. He's the last person she wants in here. He's already been in once. You'll have to help me get rid of him. Are you Rachel? I'm just gonna nip in the office and use the phone, okay? Um, no, you can't go in there. What do you mean? She wouldn't be good to your own father a phone call, would she? Well, it's the door, it's locked. <sighs> I can't find the key. Rachel, what are you like, love? You're gonna need to go in there sometime, aren't you? I'll see if I can force it. No, Mr. Dixon, you can't do that. I don't know, she's only been gone two minutes and the place is in chaos. I hope your manager thinks properly. Of course I am. Here you go. You can use this. Oh. Thanks, mate. Thanks for that. Don't mention it. Well, I'm glad that's over with. The VAT books are fine. I'll let the accountants handle it now. I'll tell you what, I'll swing for army. Oh, at least you stop worrying. Hello. It's me, Dad. Hi, Dad. I'm just ringing to wish you a happy birthday. Didn't want to miss your big day. <laughs> no, you won't believe it. I'm actually standing inside Bar Brooker using one of them mobile phones. I borrowed it off that Bruno you got managing the bar. They're fantastic little things, aren't they? You swear you're in the next room to me. <laughs> just tell him you've got to go. Um. Look, Dad, I'm going to have to go. Yeah, it's business. Someone's just turned up to see me. Yeah, all right, boy. Listen, once again, happy birthday, OK? Hey, don't you worry. I'll be celebrating later on. Yeah, listen, thanks for ringing, but really, I'm not going to have to go. OK, see you, Dad. <sighs> OK, so you're going to have to get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be skint. How come you can afford a mobile phone? Uh, it's not mine, if you must. Oh, don't tell me. It belongs to your jacket. Listen, Ralph, I don't have to explain anything to you. No, that's right, you don't. You can tell my solicitor. You want to be careful who you're letting in here, mate. That fella's a danger to society. Take no notice, so. Yeah. Take a look at this. There. The magistrate, in summing up, stated that Mr Dixon had selfishly and recklessly endangered the lives of others. It was an accident, I tell you. It's you, heartbroken grandfather of Kylie, says he's not going to get away with it. Mr Corkin, a local teacher and concerned resident, says it's a disgrace that criminals like Dixon are allowed to get away with murder. I shall seek my justice elsewhere. What do you mean? Not gonna get away with it. I told you it was an accident and I've got to fork out over 3,000 quid. Oh, yeah. At 18 pounds a week. Well, don't right, worry, now, that will be all you can pay that time. I'm just... <sighs> oh, you're okay. Yeah, listen, I'll get a taxi at the top of the roof. Right, I'd better get back. I'll phone you later. <sighs> okay, see you later. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'll be fine, honest. Okay, see, see you. Later.
Birthday girl's here. You're going to have to hurry up. We're going to be late. She's here. Marcus picked me up from the station. He's finished the contract for his book, and they've given him a car as part of the deal. You're driving a car? Well, I am surprised. I am full of them. I've booked a table for four at a restaurant in town. Now, we are all going out to celebrate Louise's 19th birthday. Well, that's one surprise too many, I'm afraid, because I've already booked a table for three at Grant's. Can you think of ringing and letting us know? Marcus likes surprises. He doesn't do anything that's predictable. Exactly. Yes, well, that doesn't seem to help the predicament we find ourselves in. Two restaurants for one party. Well, haven't you got the number for Grant's and our phone and cancelled the booking? I can't just cancel at the last minute. This reservation's been made for weeks. This is the first time that I've been able to book a table and go out for dinner with my daughter on her birthday in 18 years. Now, you're not going to deprive me of my moment, are you? Oh, go on, Ollie. Please say you'll cancel it. Just say we've gone down with the flu or something. Made a mess of everything, haven't I? No. You haven't. Well, I made a mess of the mediation, and, and now this welfare report's going to go against me. God knows what Kylie was saying up in that room. Well, she's probably going on about her Disney videos and her Barbie dolls. You know what she's like when she gets going. What if the welfare report goes against me? Lindsay, you are a good mother, and nobody is going to try and tell you otherwise. Can we have some champagne, please? Who's that girl over there? Who? The girl with the fair hair? Don't point. I've already had some dirty looks off the guy sitting next to her. My name's Louise. Why? Do you fancy her? I never said that. Who's the fella, then? Is it a boyfriend? No, it's a dad. You're asking a lot of questions, considering you don't fancy her. <sighs> I never said that, either. Hiya. That Bruno's a right feet dog. He's only out for what he can get. He's just been asking about Louise. Yes, well, you had your chance and you didn't want to know, so don't be complaining. Nineteen years old. If ever there was a need for the words, if only. <sighs> I could have been with my daughter for the past 19 years. Now, where's that champagne? <sighs> Who would have thought? Eleanor and I could create something so beautiful. Are you impressed, Ollie? Marcus, you're making me blush. Yes. She certainly takes after her mother when it comes to her looks. Ollie. You disappoint me. When I spoke of Louise's beauty, I was talking about her inner self. What she believes in and what she has become. But I see, like most men, you see women as mere sex objects. Because if you were able to look deeper, you would see that Louise is more like me than anyone. Yes. Well, I would say that that is a matter of opinion. Right. I'll go and organize a taxi to take us into town. So they come to meet me, eh? I didn't want to stay in by myself. I knew who's gone up with his mates. I feel better now, anyway. So I'll take you to be going back to school on Monday, though. Yeah, I did feel bad this morning, honest. I wasn't putting it on, but I like a beaky comb. Oh, I'm not that again, James. I wasn't going to say anything. No, no, it wasn't a smile I saw there, was it? You certainly picked up since this afternoon. We still got with Cassie more often. <laughs> <laughs> so what's brought you out, then? I promise Louise to have a few birthday drinks with so I'll go and enjoy them, actually. Is, uh, is Louise a mate here, or is that? Yeah, why? Do you want me to introduce you to her? Yeah, if you don't mind. What do you like? Come on, then. Louise, um, this is Bruno. He said he wants to meet you. Hi, I'm Louise. Pleased to meet you. Believe me, the pleasure's all mine. I'm afraid this is a private party. Marcus, this is my friend Katie. I asked her to join us. I wasn't referring to Katie. I was referring to this chameleon. <laughs> You got a problem? I see you've shed your skin and changed from a lustful male undressing my daughter with your eyes to Prince Charming. Hang on. Who do you think you're talking to? No, you hang on. Let me make myself clear. I'm not asking you to leave. I'm telling you. 
I advise you to calm down. Take your hands off me. Do you know who I am? No. But you really want to know who I am. Really? Is this necessary? We're supposed to be here celebrating my daughter's birthday. I'm sorry. A little overprotective, perhaps. Hope I haven't ruined your evening. Question, what's covered in fur, loves milk and purrs? Answer, Phoebe's mum, apparently. Friends, you've just got to watch it next. See you down there. Mark, have you seen my bag? Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you were on the phone. No, it's all right. I was just uh, booking lunch. Lunch? Mm, for today in Chester. Thought we'd meet Jackie and Lisa. Have something to eat. Oh, lovely. <laughs> what brought all this on? Well, I thought it would be a nice gesture, you know, a sort of thank you to Jackie and Lisa before we go away on holiday. Oh, great. I'll go get changed. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't um, you get changed into this? Oh, what is it? It's a new outfit. Oh! Max! Oh. <laughs> Do you like it? It's lovely! <laughs> but since when have you started buying me clothes? Uh, today I thought I'd surprise you. Oh. Well, it's much too good for lunch. No, not at all. Come on, let's start living. Let's enjoy ourselves. Listen, seven weeks from now, we'll have a baby to look after. We won't be able to do things like this, will we? <laughs> well, if you put it like that... <laughs> go on. <laughs> you go upstairs, get changed, and uh, I'll be up in a minute. Right. OK. <laughs> Crook. Jimmy. Well, it's criminal, isn't it? Hey. Ron Dixon stashing all his money away in his daughter's account, then making out his skint. I mean, where does that leave us? My blood runs cold just thinking about it. Well, there you are, then. That's that post-traumatic. What's it, that? Stress? Look at you. You're as white as a sheet. We should be taking Dixon to the cleaners. But, oh, no, he's got no money, has he? All right. All right, Greg. See, Ron Dixon made the local paper. Don't mention that toe bag to us. I know how you feel. Three grand fine, it's a joke, innit? And you know the really funny part? He's only got to pay 18 quid a week. You what? 18 quid a week? <sighs> he killed our candy. Nearly killed our Kylie. Not to mention half a dozen other people. And that's it, 18 flaming quid. Doesn't seem right, does it? And you know something? If any posh knobs had been hurt in that explosion, it'd be a different story. I mean, they'd be getting all sorts, wouldn't they? Compo, counselling, the lot. One law for them, one law for us. Yeah, you're not wrong there, mate. Hi. Hello. Are you busy? Never too busy for flowers. All right. Well, in that case. All right. What's the occasion? Do I need one? Well, usually. Well, it's uh, just my way of saying I'm here for you. You can count on me, whatever happens. Thanks. I take it you're referring to Marcus's little outburst on Friday night? I thought he was going to crown someone. Well, it wouldn't have been the first time, would it? No. Do you think he's still dangerous? Well, I don't suppose being locked up for 18 years could have done much for his karma. No. No, I suppose not. 
Have you heard anything from him this week? No, nothing. Seems to have gone to ground. Well, let's hope it's permanent, that we never see him again. I don't think we'll be getting rid of him that easily. I know. I know the words bad smell and hanging around come to mind, don't they? Oh, God. I came round here to cheer you up. Look, let's forget about him. I'll buy you lunch if you promise me one thing. What's that? No more talk about Marcus. We don't even mention his name. Okay. You nervous? A bit, yeah. Good sign. Adrenaline pumping? Yeah. Does it look like this done? All right. Here you go. Everyone you know on this? It's all my family and friends, so there's about 20 people. That's good. You make appointments with these, and when you see them, you get them to give you five more names each. That's another 100 appointments. That could be big money, Mikey. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> so far, so good. I did the first presentation, then you're on your own, OK? Yeah. You just watch me and learn. <sighs> hey, relax. You're half an hour from closing your first deal. So who are we seeing first? Um, me yeah, fella. And we're meeting him in here? Well, he works over in the petrol station, so I thought it'd be convenient. Good thinking, Mikey. So, is he the manager? Sorry? Your dad, has he, has he got a few bob? No, not exactly. Well, what do you think? You look... What? Great. <laughs> not uh, too over the top for lunch. No, it's... It, it's wonderful. Well, thanks. You don't look so bad yourself. Susanna, I, I do love you, you know. Yeah. I love you, too. Uh, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. <laughs> well, I should hope so. Yeah, well, I, I just wanted you to know, that's all. Anyway, those rainy days, when you go to the biscuit tin and it's empty, how do you feel? Gutted. All them years knocking me pan out. We have my own business, you know. Though I haven't got two apennies to rub together. Maybe you have to get back at work. I've got about an hour. I see. Would you like another drink? No, I'm fine with this one, thanks. Well, this is fun, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just you know who. I can't stop thinking about him. Yep. Well, if it makes you feel any better, neither can I. It's great, isn't it? He's not even here, and we still can't have a drink in peace. Well, as we don't seem to have anything else to talk about, I might as well tell you what's on my mind. What you were saying before about the effect prison must have had on it. What about it? Well, do you think we've underestimated it? In what way? Well, 18 years inside. I mean, it must really change you. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yes, but it can only change you for the worse, can't it? I mean, I know Marcus comes across as all cool and well-adjusted, but, but inside, he must be an angry man. You think that was the real Marcus we saw in here on Friday night? Yeah. But just how angry is he? Well, what do you mean? 18 years in prison. Years of brutalization. We don't know who he is, what he is. And we certainly don't know what he's capable of. Ron, you could have that extra security for as little as two pounds a week. Two quid a week on the money that shower pay. Ron. We all have to make sacrifices. It's two quid a week. A fish supper, a pint of bitter. Well, I suppose if you put it like that, like. Two pounds a week for peace of mind. Knowing that little nest egg is there for you, security. And if you were to pass away, knowing your loved ones would be provided for, how would you feel about that? Well, wouldn't say no, would I? <laughs> <laughs> no. Ron, I've got something to show you. A savings plan with term assurance tailor-made for the over-50s. Yeah? But before I show you the plan, I need to know something. Ron, are you serious about doing business with me today? <whistles> All right. You ready? Yeah, let's get the shirt back on. No need to come upon my account. Where's the car? I left around the shop, so we'll get up and barbecue. Sad. So, um, how's it going with your dad? Bad. Jace, have you got the, uh... Oh, hello. Hiya. I'm going for me dinner. What time are you back? When I've finished, come out.
Look how long you're working, sir. Late. Stuck there all day. Probably be stuck there for the rest of my life. Well, no one wants to know me as a teacher, do they? Oh, no one I'll look will probably lose my job in the chippy and all. What makes you say that? Well, Mick's only talking about taking on their Leo, isn't he? Well, if he does that, he's gonna need to get rid of someone, isn't he? Oh, hey. Oh, aye, aye. Look at these two. Where are you off to then, eh? Dressed up to the nines. Lunch in Chester. Huh? All right for some. Yeah, not for others. Well, makes you think, doesn't it? They're off out for the lunch and we haven't got to eat these to rub together. Well, maybe that's the way things are meant to be, eh? It's our lot. Just got to get on with it. Hey, come on. I'll sneak you a bag of chips. Coffee. Why is he being so horrible, eh? How do you think I feel having to go through that? He hasn't taken my feelings into account, has he? It's not just the abortion. It's because we told me gran and not him. Well, excuse me, but I don't think it's anything to do with your dad, but I do with my body. Yeah, well, I agree. Except that it was his money that we used to eat, you know. Money? That's what all this about, is it? Well, he can have his money. What's that? Fifty pounds. Start paying him back. Let's put it away, eh? If you hadn't taken the money in the first place. Yeah, but I did, didn't I? Because we were desperate. And he can't appreciate that, so we can whistle for it. Jace, be reasonable, eh? Me? Me be reasonable? I'm not the one who's got me head buried in the sand. And you're just as bad? <sighs> Look, I just want an end to all this. Do you think I've been through enough already? Ron, before you sign anything, this is a savings plan, two pounds a week. I need to know, are you serious about saving? Yeah, yeah, security, peace of mind, you know. You're talking my language? If you'd just like to put your autograph there. Right you are. Here you go. Thanks. Nice one, Dad. Do you know what? I should have done this years ago. And if I could take your first week's contribution? Certainly, sir. As long as you don't mind it in coppers, like. Whatever's easiest. Who'd have thought it, eh? My lad and I finance. Suzanne, uh, uh, just a sec, there's uh, something I wanted to ask you. Which is it? <laughs> well, it's a bit out of the blue, really. Um... <laughs> what is? Well, now was as good a time as any. Max, is everything all right? Susanna, will you marry me? Will you marry me? Max. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, whew. Okay. Come on then. Well, where are we going? We need to get married. What now? Here. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Back to work? Well, what about Marcus? Well, that's it. Well, what do you want me to do? Talk to him. What? Ask him to leave. Are you serious? Deadly. You want me to talk to him? Well, he doesn't want to listen to anything that I've got to say. And why should he listen to me? Because of your history. You can relate to him. Oh, come on, Eleanor. It's got to be worth a go. What other options have we got? Look, at least think about it. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, bye. Um, Eleanor Love. Oh, hello. Um, I'm sorry to bother you, Love, but um, have you heard anything about our Kylie? Sorry? Well, you know, from the court welfare officer. Oh, yeah, um, no, but I think we're expecting the report tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh. Any idea where I'll be in it, like? I'm sorry, but I can't discuss the case with you. What? Client confidentiality. I'll have to talk to Lindsay. <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me, will you? I'm just the kid's grandmother. Oh, it's up these stairs. <laughs> well, we can't get married. Oh, yes, we can. But we need a licence and everything. Well, yeah, I know. <gasps> Lisa! Jackie! Hi, sis. Hiya. <laughs> what are you two doing here? Well, these are our witnesses. 
you arranged all this? I wanted to surprise you. Here, these are for you. <laughs> and that's for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Farnham, you'd like to step this way, please? Come on. I haven't seen myself these past few days. Since that egg the ball Gary turned off. Can I make salt vinegar? Yes, Making our life a misery. Making all our lives a misery. Was he still digging his heels in over your car? Going all the way to court, over That's a put my kid through, that's sick, isn't it? There you go. Thanks a lot. Bye. Yeah, she was a bit of all right, wasn't she? Yeah, not bad. Oh, Mr. Cool. Well, Mick, she was giving you the eye there. Hey, Jimmy. Mick, you've copped. Do us a favour, will you? Don't stick. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Susanna Farnham... I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Susanna Farnham... ...do take thee, Max Farnham, to be my lawful wedded husband. Do take thee, Max Farnham, to be my lawful wedded husband. Weekends and evenings, babe. Grace, so we'll be living on a building site for the next three years, as usual. <sighs> Don't start, eh, love? Between you and your brother. You two still at it, are you? Oh, you're like a pair of big kids. Why can't you just pack it in, eh? You wouldn't understand, love. What? It's a man thing, is he? Just leave it, eh? You put me off me sarny. Well, sorry, but that's just tough, cos our Jason's all right. And so's Katrina. So why can't you just give them a break, eh? Have we finished? I can do it out the lecture, thank you very much. Yeah, well, someone needs to tell you the way you're carrying on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, better get back to work. Well, you haven't finished your dinner yet. <sighs> Hold on, eh? Dad. What? I've got something to say to you. Either mouth, eh, Dad? Come on. Look, we're sorry about all the carry on. But you're sorry? Just give it a chance. I know we were stupid, and we really regret what happened. We don't want to fall out with you. We want to pay the money back. Sweet 50 pounds. Come on, Dad, take it. I don't want any money. I told you he wouldn't take it. I said you were wasting your time. He's too stubborn. Hey, don't you talk to me like that. Dad. I'll speak to you the way I want. Jason. What are you sticking up for him for? I've had it with you. You can stick your job. Hump your own bricks. Jason. Oh, well done, Dad. Are you happy now? Katrina. I give you this ring as a token of our marriage and as a symbol of all that we share. I give you this ring as a token of our marriage and a symbol of all that we share. Max? I give you this ring as a token of our marriage and as a symbol of all that we share. As a token of our marriage and as a symbol of all that we share. Max and Susanna, you're now husband and wife. <laughs> well, come on then. Kiss her. Jason! Jason! Oh. Forget him. Come out. Buy you the drink. Had one of them welfare officers round the house the other day. Oh, cool. oh, checking on our Kylie's own situation. Seen if Alvin is a suitable mother, all that palaver. You what? A joke, isn't it? So this welfare officer decides who's going to get Kylie? Well, apparently it's all part of the process. She does a report, then the court takes her into consideration. Hey, Jimmy, no way your Lindsay's going to lose Kylie. All well, the way our looks going at the moment, I'm telling you, Mick. I wouldn't count on anything. Hi. Hi, eh? Can of orange, please. You put too much salt on those chips, I'm parched. Sorry, I'll remember that next time. Who said there was going to be a next time? Hey, I'm only joking. I've just started work in the salon next door, so you'll be seeing loads more of me. Ta-da, Smiler. See ya. And he reckons she doesn't fancy him.
congratulations, Lisa. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Lisa. You'll have to take extra care of her now. Oh, don't you worry. I intend to. <laughs> Come on, let's have a picture for the album. All oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you two stop chewing the face off each other. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jackie. Oh, no, don't be done. I made up for you the pair of Thanks, John. <laughs> You three keeping all this a secret? When did you plan all this? Well, a, a couple of weeks ago. I, I thought it would be a good idea if we were married before the baby was born. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Come on, another photo. The three of you together. Um, well, do you think we should? Well, I'm not supposed to be here, am I? Oh, I won't do any harm. Yeah, no one else is going to see it. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Great. Come on, get in the middle. Oh, bit of a tight squeeze. <laughs> Breathe in. <laughs> Say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> Yeah, he does. He doesn't. He's been exactly the same with our Jason. He's just that stubborn like. Well, why is it being like that? What's he hoping to achieve? I don't know. Does he want to split me and Jason up? Is that it? No. I just think he feels let down. What is that close family like? No secrets. We talk about everything usually. And our Jason's never really been in any trouble before. Until he met me. Oh, so it is my fault I led him astray. Don't be soft. You didn't get pregnant on your own, did you? My dad's just as angry with Jason as he is with you. What well, am I supposed to do? I've said sorry. I don't know, you know. It's too my head in. Yeah, I don't know. And what about Jason? What about him? He's just jacked his job in. What's he gonna do? He'll be back. Him and your dad can't go on and live in the same house together. The way they're carrying on. What is it with fellas, hey? Everything ends up in a scrap. Yeah, but if they don't sort themselves out soon, we are worse than a scrap. They'll end up killing each other. On me, kid. Oh. Mick said I could have half an hour while we were quiet. You all right? What's wrong? Everything. You what? We've got nothing, Jimmy. Oh, come on. Just because I didn't get that job? <laughs> well, we never get the breaks, do we? Jackie, love. We're losers. Life's losers. Jackie. Well, that's what we are, isn't it? You said it yourself. Said what? People like us. Everyone and everything's against us. Look what happened in court with Ron Dixon. Well, don't be worrying about him. I haven't finished with him yet. You're wasting your time. People like us never get justice. What's going to happen with Kylie, eh? I mean, you saw that welfare officer coming round in and her nose up. It's all some them, isn't it? What? You know what it's like in the courts, Jimmy. It's one law for the rich and one for the poor. Hey, they're not letting our Kylie anywhere near Gary Stanlow. Says it. Says me. Well, that's just this, isn't it? Can't you get us into your thick head? They don't listen to people like you, Jimmy. They think we're scum. You are? If anyone's scum, it's Stanlow. <sighs> oh, Kylie's life. Oh, Lindsay's life in the hands of some no-mark welfare officer, Jimmy. That's what it's come to. <laughs> We've lost a son, haven't we? If he gets our Kylie, it'll kill me. And it'll kill our Lindsay. <laughs> Love. He is not going to get anywhere near our Kylie, all right? <laughs> Look, I promise you, whatever that report says, our Kylie is not going anywhere near that scumbag. Sinbad, Carmel and Tinhead will be tucking into the bigger breakfast tomorrow morning here on 4. And next tonight, Equinox tracks the progress of a specialist team of body hunters searching for clues to the suspicious disappearance of a Royal Marine missing for the last 18 years.
Hiya. Any news? Oh, hi. Yes, I spoke to Jackie earlier, but she said Lindsay wasn't in. Yeah, she just got in ten minutes ago. Hang on. Linz! Mrs Simmer wants a word! Call welfare woman been in touch, then? That's right. Not bad news, is it? Only she's been on pins, you know. I can only really talk to Lindsay about it, I'm afraid. Hiya. Hi. Call welfare's been in touch. Oh, right. Is there a problem with it? It's for your ears only. Hey, uh, why don't you come round for a brim? I'll stick the cat on. I'll come round. Go easy on the cheese. You could have saved some milk. I can't do nothing right these days. Been taking lessons off Katrina, have you? She was only trying to sort things out, you know. Pay you back some of the cash so you get off me case. Yeah, well, life isn't as simple as that. Yeah, well, maybe it should be, eh? Anyway, she was well upset. As upset as me and your mother were when we found out what you'd spent the money on. That was a totally different thing. Do you know how hard it was for her to come round here and offer it back? And all you could do was throw it back in her face. I never threw it back in her face. Yeah, well, you might as well have. That was a shame. Hey, you're the one who brought the shame in the house in the first place. It's only me. Oh, what's your mother doing now? Go and get a wash. She'll have a fit if she sees you making sarnies with hands like that. Hiya. What's up with sulky chaps? Oh, he's been having a go at me for not taking Katrina's money off her, so I had to go back at him. What are you doing now? I had a meeting for a forward to the savvy. So for it's there. Suppose it's better than working, having meetings all the time instead. Greg, don't start. It's important. Any chance for Sarney? Yeah, go ahead, dig in. Suppose you'll be home late, will you? Well, there's a good chance. Can I do anything? I only feel guilty. But not having our tea on the table when we get home after a hard day's graft. In your dreams, Shadwin. It was awful speaking to my mum before. She's still upset about her Beth. Well, she would be. It's three years since she died, isn't it? No. Just brings back all the memories about my dad and that. Listen, when I get back from Jackie's, let's get together for a chat. I'm okay, really. Honest. All right. Okay. How you doing? Okay. Not bad. Okay, send away to see Jackie. So, have you got any messages you want to passing on? No, I don't think so. Nothing special, really. She knows the place is in safe hands. Just tell her the profits are rolling in as they should. They should keep us money. Right then, I'll get myself together. We text to the station. I'll be here in a minute. What's up? What's he doing? I only put those new prices up five minutes ago. He's doing what managers always do, doing things his own way. I wish Jackie would let me be in charge. Would have saved all this messing about. You can't just blame Jackie. It's Paddy Cran's business these days. He can bring in who he wants to run the place. Mm, I wish he'd have brought me in instead of one of his yes men. I thought you fancied him. Who said? Well, it isn't exactly not obvious. It's all the way you're looking at him. Just because I fancy him doesn't mean I have to like working for him. Just wish he'd let me make a few more decisions the way Jackie does. So seeing as you fancy him, you're going to ask him out? No way. Why not? Well, anyway, I've turned him down once. Well, do you want me to tell him you've changed your mind? I'm old enough to tell him myself, thank you. Oh, Richard, you haven't been out with anyone in ages. You'd be old enough to retire before you'd have a date the way you're going. Behave! <laughs> I'm not going to end up some old maid. Anyway, you can talk. Listen, Rich. Everyone understands how you feel, you know. Oh, your dad and then Christian. But we're your mates and we want you to have a life and that includes having fellas. I can have whatever fella I want, whenever I want. And I've got no problem about your dad or Christian. Well, ask Bruno out then. He's obviously interested. Just go for it. See ya. Yeah, see ya. Send Jackie my best. Oh, thanks. There you go, girls. See ya. Thanks. Right, I'll leave you to it then, eh? Well, I don't mind my dad hearing what's been said. Are you sure? Oh, he is on my side in all of this. OK, it's up to you. Well, one thing that's clear is that they seem quite happy that, basically, Kylie has a good relationship with both you and Gary. She just didn't have much of a relationship with him when he disappeared. Well, that's as maybe. But from what the court welfare officer has seen and from what Kylie said, that's the opinion she's formed. Meaning Gary's managed to con air. I don't know he does it. This isn't just about what Gary said, remember? This includes Kylie's feelings and viewpoint and your own. I'm sorry. Go on. Well, what's central to the report is what the court welfare officer thinks is in Kylie's best interest. Basically, that she should maintain contact with her father. Typical, isn't it? The way the law works in this country. I know it's difficult, but I'm just letting you know how things stand on the current legislation. <sighs> Well, I don't know who makes up the laws in this country, but they ought to be locked up themselves, I'm telling you that. Dad, 
So how do things stand now? Well, first there'll be a contact order set by the court. This is to establish how much time Kylie spends with her father and where and when that'll be. I'm not saying she should live with Gaddy. Well, they'll have to kick down the door to come and get her if they are. No, Mr Stanlow hasn't applied for residence. The court will purely be ruling on contact. And that'll be the end of it then? More or less. Boy, if you wanted to move house, Mr Stanlow could apply to the court to stop you. So I can't even live where I want now? It wasn't Kylie who split from Gary, it was you. And the courts are bound by law to make sure that Kylie has the fullest opportunity for contact with both her natural parents. The law isn't there just to say where she lives and under what conditions. It's there to support her long-term emotional needs. The law is there to protect your daughter, not to punish you. Tell me that I'm going back to work. Why aren't you going to wait for him? I don't think I'd be that bothered. You two still not speaking to each other? Just about. What did Katrina have to say about what happened with your dad? Oh, plenty. Like what? Like about how ashamed she was. He may as well have just called her a slag and had done with it. He's good as did. Jason, have you tried thinking how this must all feel like from where he's standing? I'll do that when he starts taking into account how me and Katrina might feel. All he was worried about was where his precious money had gone. That's not true. He doesn't give a monkeys about how hard it was for us to go through. Now, stop it. You know that's not true. Well, it sure looks like that from where we're standing. She's my girlfriend, Mum. I shouldn't have to put up with anyone treating her like that, even if he is me dad. So what did he say? He told her where she could stick her money. Hey, you, I heard that. I never said that at all, and you know I didn't. Look, it wasn't her who took the money in the first place. It was you, so it should be you paying it back. Right, there you go. That's all I've got on me, if you're so desperate for it. Oh, Jason, don't be so soft. You're lucky you've got a job in the first place. If this wasn't a family firm, the police would have been called in, you know. We've had a brilliant morning. We've been to all the local radio stations and newspapers, and they all said they'll do a piece on Marcus's book when it comes out. They were really into the idea. I think Louise sold it to them pretty well. I'm going to make a sandwich. Do you want one? Um, no, thanks. I've eaten. I'm due back at the office shortly. Cheese and cucumber, OK? Mm, sounds great. You've got to rush off, have you? What is this with your book? I mean, Louise has been raving on about it ever since she read it. She seems convinced it's going to change the world. Well, I never told her it would change the world. People change the world, not books. Anyway, it's still only in a draft stage. See, I wanted to find out what someone of her generation thought. She seems to really rate it. She should be preparing herself for college, remember? Not putting all her energies into the marketing of the thoughts of Chairman Marcus. <laughs> a love affair interrupted. Thank you. What kind of title is that for another book on eco-critique essays? You don't have such a closed mind about things. Look, can you remember what it's like being a child? You know, discovering things for the first time. Like that birds fly and flowers grow and smell beautiful and... Wasps sting and water's wet, all the really simple things. Well, for a child of that age, every moment is part of a love affair with the wonder of life. And then it's interrupted by school. And growing up and work and, and all the harsh realities that come with getting older. All the cynicism, all the hypocrisy, all the skepticism, all the selfishness. Are you marketing yourself as some kind of new eco-messiah then? All we need to do is to rediscover our love affair with the wonder of the world we live in. But did you think that I might have other reasons for calling it a love affair interrupted? I didn't think anything. Maybe you should read the book before you condemn it. It's not about hate. It's about love, Eleanor. A lot of people know that you went to prison over a violent attack on a man. Some might find your claim to base your book on the concept of love a bit sickening he was my mistake but what's in the book is more fundamental than that it's about growing up the way we did always being spoon fed social behavior that stank being spoon fed politics that stank scientific progress that stank growing up in the shadow of the mushroom clouds over hiroshima watching students being gunned down at kent state university watching nixon napalm the Viet Cong. why did all those things happen those and thousands of other crimes against humanity but what's all this got to do with me reading your book? Well, the main thing my book is about is about people 
like me and you, overcoming their fear of governments, of armies, of big companies, of powerful people. That's all it's about when it comes down to it. It's the fear in you and a million people like you that stops the world changing. And only when those million people and you start to overcome their fear, that's when things will change. You should read it. It's brilliant. Just. It's like I'm the sack of spuds strapped to you all the time. Mm -hmm. It's hard to believe I used to have a waistline like this. You'll come back. Mm, yep, so. Okay, I'm glad we came out. I've been going mental stuff and Lisa's flat all the time. Maybe we've got it at the register office. Yeah, true. I still can't believe Mac and Susanna got married without telling anyone back at the close. Can you imagine how narc Julia Brogan's gonna be? She'd be mortified at missing the chance of a good cry. No, oh, it was dead romantic the way Mac set it up and kept it all a secret. Susanna really didn't know a thing about it? Nope, nothing. She was so made up there, honest. I tell you something, I can't wait to wave the farms off into the sunset with this baby. That's all I keep thinking about these days. That and you, me and Rachel lying on the beach being normal again. Knocking back to the Bacardi's. Tying up the lads. Hey, Richie must have a fella by the time we go on holiday. Oh, yeah, do. Bruno? Is he nice once you get to know him? Yeah, not bad. Who did you get together? It might stop them knocking at each other all the time. Are right, you ready, then? Yeah, come on. Let's hit the streets. I reckon I'm in need of a bit of shopping therapy. <laughs> Quite the sort of shop and thought you'd had in mind, Jack. Oh, I've got to buy this one for definitely. And look, it's a little hat that goes with it. <laughs> well, will Max and Susanna be providing all the baby's clothes? Well, I don't care what they provide. This is going to be the first thing my baby wears after it's born. <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, but he kept his lip well buttoned. Oh, Greg, we can't carry on like this. The last thing our Jason needs is us on his back all the time. After what he's been through, he needs us there to support him, not to judge him. Yeah, well, he should have thought of that before he got Katrina in trouble. Oh, come on. Never mind, come on. If it wasn't for Ollie Simpson, we'd never have known anything about all this. Because he didn't think he could trust us. And as for my mother, keeping secrets all around the place. Greg, have you heard yourself? It's no wonder no one will tell you anything private. They're scared in case you go through the roof or tear them to shreds. Some pasta on the stove, love. That's all right. I'm going to meet Katrina in a minute. <sighs> Fair enough. Well, it's more for the girls when they get in. You will be in later, won't you? Yeah. Got me keys. Eh, uh, Jace. Listen, uh, if you're not having your tea at home, get yourself a pizza or something. And one for Katrina. So, I'll see you. You really look after me, don't you? Oh, part of the service. Bruno? Uh huh. Um, do you, do you fancy getting together one night? Oh, like a date, you mean? Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Why didn't you say so? So, do you fancy going out one night then? Just you and me? Yeah. Well, if we can get this place covered properly, I don't see why not. Don't sound too keen. I'm keen, yeah. I'm just a bit taken by surprise, that's all. I thought you had a real down on me with me being brought in here over your head like. Doesn't mean we can't be friends, though, does it? Great, then. We'll have to work something out. Breathe in. And out. And relax. You're dragging me around all the coolest places in Chester today, aren't you? Hey, you're supposed to be my birth partner. You need to start cluing yourself into what's involved. No, I was hoping I could just turn up and hold your hand with my eyes shut. <laughs> I 
Well, it's been really nice seeing you. Been getting really bored some days. Yeah, well, you're bound to. You used to run around at 90 miles an hour all day. You're not used to doing nothing. <laughs> or being on my own. Yeah, hey, you're never on your own these days. Not why you've got Junior inside you. Hey, thought I was going off my head yesterday. I suddenly realised I'd been told to me tummy for about half an hour. Well, it was moving all around like it was getting itself comfortable. And I just started talking to it. Go away, what did she say? Well, I was talking about that new club idea I've had. Well, it's not exactly a new idea. It's been in my head for ages, but I'm normally so busy, I haven't had time to think it through. What did Junior reckon to all this? Well, I got some very good advice from you, told me thank you very much. We decided to talk it through with Barry, didn't we? I didn't know being pregnant sent you loopy. And Barry thought it was a sound idea. He even told me about some premises that might be for sale near Grants in Christopher's Church Hall. Oh, fancy Junior not knowing about these premises. Could have saved you the cost of a phone call. So when's all this can happen? A couple of months, probably. The vicar's gone off on a retreat, but apparently we'll have to wait for the church commissioners to make up their minds about we'll selling the place in September anyway, and then there'll probably be an auction. I thought you were coming to Chester for a rest before the birth. It sounds like you're spending all your time wheeling and dealing. Hey, just because I'm pregnant doesn't mean my brain stopped working. I've got to do something to keep me sane. Jack, you know when you put that little baby grow before? Oh, yeah, it wasn't a cute. <laughs> yeah. It's just that I thought you were supposed to give the baby to the farm straight away after it was born. And out. Well, more or less, yeah. So how come you buy any clothes then? Relax. Well, I don't want my baby wrapped up in some minty hospital sheets. The least I can do is buy its first baby grow. I've got to give it the right kind of stars in life, haven't I? Breathe in. Yeah, thanks again. Bye. Who was that? That's three chat show researchers on the trot, and they're all really keen to have Marcus on the telly when his book comes out. I've had a really productive afternoon. Louise, we need to talk about what you're getting yourself into here. Is it OK if he stays for tea? Only I need to talk him through the interviews I've set out for him. I really think you need to slow down on all this stuff with Marcus. Have you had a look at his book? I glanced at it. Look, can we just get one thing straight? I see a lot of clients who end up in a real mess because somebody comes into their lives and, and wrecks it for them. Well, how would you feel coming out after being locked up for 18 years? You'd be desperate to look up old friends and family. Have you any idea what it means to him to have found us? Yes, I have. But that doesn't mean he has the right to come into our lives and turn them upside down forever. Well, I know you're not going to like this. But it is time for him to move on. And what about me? Does that mean I have to move on as well? I'm talking about Marcus, not you. No, this is about me having to choose between the two of you. <sighs> Louise, would you mind leaving us alone for a minute, please? We've had three yeses off the TV chat shows. They all want us to get back to them. Great. Thanks. <clears throat> is there some kind of problem? Yeah, you, basically. I think it's time for you to move on. And for a whole range of reasons, I'd really rather you didn't come round here anymore. Are you, uh, telling me not to see Louise again as well? Well, I'd rather you didn't have such an all-consuming effect on her. But she's old enough to track you down regardless of what I say. But while she's still young and naive enough to be led on by you, I'd like you to keep your distance. So I'd appreciate it if you'd get your things together and get out of here before Ollie gets back. Tough talk. You know, that's really you at your best, when you're fired up and passionate. Oh, look, please, don't start. I, um, hadn't realised I'd got things so wrong. I thought you liked my company. I thought you approved of the interest I was taking in Louise. And even though I know that I've been getting up Ollie's nose, I, I thought we could get over that in time. Look, he's going to be back in a minute. I'd really rather you weren't here. Louise is a very a beautiful young woman, you know, and, um... Very bright and full of spirit. Uh, we made her, Eleanor. I'm really proud of her. However things end up between me and you, she will always carry something of the both of us with her. And just as I shall carry with me my dreams of you. What dreams? I used to dream them. About us walking together, holding hands. A love affair interrupted. I, um, I really got it wrong, didn't I? <laughs> so wrong.
Are you doing a good job there, Dad? Yeah, well, if people were paying for our swear, we'd be quids in, wouldn't we? Hey, hey. Can you some clean water, mate? Yeah, go on, help yourself. Just like the old Hello. days, isn't it? You blagging for clean water. I don't suppose you'd say no to a cup of tea, would you? Well, if you're offering, it'll give me the chance to take the weight off my ankle. Yeah, right, he's here. Well, I'm giving you a bit of jip, is it? Get that kettle. Mm, it's not just the ankle. I'm making in every muscle in my body. Do you know what I think? I'm getting too old for this, lad. Dad, is someone from Brookie Comp? Sounds serious. Do you want to speak to Martin Corhill? Hello. You had an interview there last week. Didn't get the job done. That's right, Mr Thornton. Martin James Corkill. Jimmy to be friends. Oh, that's terrible news. That must have come as a big shock to everyone. How can I help? Yeah. Well, that's very kind of you to think of me, Mr Thornton, you know, um, under the circumstances like. Yeah, it must be a particularly trying time for everyone. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, I've, I mean, you know, if... Yeah, if I can help out under the circumstances, you know, I'd, uh, I'd be more than willing to step into the breach. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Oh, you call me as soon as you can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, uh, Mr Thornton, pass on my condolences to the family, will you? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Most kind. Bye. Yes! Dad, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. Come on, come on. Yes. What's he playing at? Dad? I've got a job. I've got a job! I've got a future, and these, these are history. Jimmy! Hey, Mr Corkle, if you don't mind, cos now I am a proper teacher! Yes! <laughs> Flogging a bargain or a dead horse? Next on Four Deals on Wheels puts the bangers through their paces to see if they're worth the metal they're made from.